We sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. We sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh for your presence for your name for your name so great lift your voice and say we sing Somebody here that the Lord will deliver this night. When we get up to pray again, the power of God is going to move. There are enchantments and incantations that will be broken. Blessed be your name. Lift your hands and bless his name. Listen to this.
Come and have your way right in this place. I sing it again. Move, Lord. Move, Lord. Come and have your way right in this place. Move, Lord. Move. of abdominal conditions right now particularly there's somebody with sharp pain but the Lord is healing abdominal condition and that's why we are asking him to heal, heal. come on heal Even in this nation. Come and have your way. One more time, come and have come and have your way.
let's go to the word. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 and verse 9. I want to I want us to treat for the next two Sundays a burden that the Lord laid in my heart. This is not a teaching per se. This is just a cry of the spirit from Monday this week. The Lord laid this burden in my, in my heart and I want us to walk with it for the next two weeks if the Lord will permit the need for priesthood. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 and verse 9. I, I hope I can walk with you tonight. Projector. All right. But you are choosing verse 5 first, then verse 9. Please. And then after that, we'll go to Revelations and read a few scriptures and then we'll proceed. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Emphasis on the word holy priesthood. In other words, a culture of priests that are separated unto God for a particular cause. The Bible says this is God's ordination for believers of the New Testament. Verse 9 popular scripture that we all know god bless the minister sinach for producing a song that captures this revelation but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into what his marvelous light the bible also speaks about royal priesthood so in verse 5 he speaks of a holy priesthood in verse 9 it speaks of a royal or a kingdom of priests now one of the things that every believer must understand at the basic level of their work at the basics of their work with god having been delivered from the power of darkness and sin and translated into the kingdom of the son of god one of the things that the believers a believer must understand is the revelation of our identity we must know who we are so that we don't adopt a system a culture a way of life that carries or, or that expresses another identity we cannot afford to be confused of who we are and this scripture gives us the revelation of our, our identity that before redemption what god had in mind was to produce a people that will be priests and then more so a hybrid not just priests the bible says royal priesthood that means they will be kings and priests revelations chapter 1 Let's see verse 6 and then chapter 5 verse 10. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. This is what the blood of Jesus did for us. If you read from verse 5. Has made us kings and priests. Some translations will say a kingdom of priests. To his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen chapter 5 verse 10 so we were made priests and kings to who to god one of the characteristics of a priest is that he is separated for a cause so we have been separated to god it is to god that we function as priests and kings 5 verse 10 john is still receiving revelations from heaven and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth King James says that we should rule and reign on the earth so in chapter 1 verse 6 the Bible speaks about the jurisdiction of our priesthood and in chapter 5 verse 10 it speaks of the dominion of our priesthood so if you understand chapter 1 verse 6 
says that we will be priests unto God and also kings but it's focused more on the priest or the priestly aspect of our identity if you are with me say amen, amen. then chapter 5 verse 10 is more focused on the kingship of our priesthood that's why it gives us the jurisdiction of our reign because kings reign in proverbs he says in, i think it's chapter 8 or 9 he says of wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes decree what justice so the bible says to the, the end that we are priesthood is, is to the end that we will reign on the earth in other words that for you and you know dominion is the one word that captures god's purpose for every man he created and let them have dominion that is the one word that captures the entire purpose of god for the creation called man man was made to dominate and that's the reason why you must wrestle against any kind of oppression impediment or yoke that the enemy seeks to bring around your life with the goal of demeaning your expression as a king or you're walking in the fullness of the dominion that God has allotted to you so what we see from Revelation is that if we function better as priests to God who is in heaven it will give us the advantage to exercise dominion on earth that means that your physical control and dominion on earth is based on the power and the depth and the spirituality of your priesthood do you understand what i'm saying so we function in a capacity spiritually that determines how we will function on the earth the need for priesthood so let's explain what priesthood is all about psalms 134 from verse 1 to 3 i think it's three verses there there's a song we used to sing that came from this scripture i will always sang this song but a time came when the lord had to give me a deeper understanding Behold, bless the Lord, all you, his, all you servants of the Lord. Give us in King James, please. Many of us will know this song. Come bless the Lord, come bless him. O ye servants of the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand, which by that's the song, right? In the house of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, I love this too. Lift up your head, lift up your head to the holy place. The core revelation of this scripture is in that verse that says, By night stand. This psalm was written to priests and Levites. When God called the children of Israel out of Egypt, God took them through the wilderness and began the process or the formation of a nation. That is, or of course, every nation, you are here. Thank you, sir. You're welcome knowledge of government or law tells us that every nation is bounded by constitution that's the reason why the first thing god did when he brought them out of egypt and crossed the red sea was that moses had to go to the mountain to receive what laws constitution that will govern a nation and in chapter 19 of exodus god was declaring his intention to the children of israel he said that i brought you out of eagle's wings so that you will become a kingdom of priests to me 
Egypt, as at that time, was known for civilization. Different nations were identified by different levels of their excellence or prowess, either in commerce, in trade, in, in literature, in language, or whatever. Israel had nothing, and God decided that the identity of Israel as a nation as a nation will be a nation that everyone was a priest. In other words, Israel was a carried or was supposed to work with a spiritual culture. Spirituality was supposed to be part of their culture. A people on earth that understood the ways of a spirit to reflect his government and his influence on the earth. And every New Testament believer is a prototype or, or is a further expression of that prototype which was seen in Israel. And so God brought out a tribe called the tribe of Levi. And this tribe was associated with the business of the temple. A priest needed a temple to serve, a shrine to serve. And so the tribe of Levi were going to be consecrated unto God as priests that will interface between God and the entire nation of Israel. So this psalm was written to them. Go back to that psalm. It was written to, and you know, most of the psalms written from Psalms 1, 1, 120 to the end. You will usually, if you read your Bible, if you have a King James Version or New King James Version, it is written on it usually, a song of ascent. Ascent. A-S-C-E-N-T-S. -E the ascent there means that it was a progression as they journeyed to Jerusalem where the temple was that there was a progression that governed their journey to the temple to worship God. But ascent in our own day where we don't need to go to Jerusalem because God is spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. Ascent means our progression from one dimension of the spirit to another till we, we take our worship to the very throne of God. Because the goal of worship is to bring the worshiper to a point where he beholds the, the one that is worshipped till he becomes like the worshipped. So when the Bible says these psalms are song of ascent, it means ascending spiritually. It happens when you pray. It happens when you worship. That's the reason why your worship and your prayer is more than just an activity. We are not trying to kill time in service. There is a journey that must begin from earth to the heavens. So this was one of such songs of ascent. And it was written to the priest. It says, Bless ye the Lord, all servants of the Lord, which by night stand. Because one of the instructions that God gave to Aaron and to his descendants was that as part of their priesthood, they were supposed to stand in the temple. When the temple was constructed, both the holy place and the most holy place, there was no bench or sitting apparatus constructed. Hello? That means you were not supposed to perform your function in the temple sitting down. And that's the reason why the priesthood of Jesus is different from that of Aaron. The Bible says Jesus is the priest after the order of Melchizedek. And he has ascended and is seated at the right hand of God. A priest does not sit down. He's a king that sits down. You know why? Because when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he finished redemption for us. And a priest, when he finishes his work in the temple, was supposed to go out, bless the people, and then go to his house. But we belong to a priesthood that can sit in the very presence of God and commune with him so one of the instructions that god gave aaron was that the candle lights in the holy place that in hebrew is called menorah the seven candlesticks they were powered by oil oil was poured into their vessels to power the light and god said that that light must burn from night till morning so a priest was always kept on duty in the temple to ensure that oil is poured into the lamp so that it doesn't go out. In Leviticus, he said that the fire will not go out. That is the reason why the work of a priest is characterized by agility and readiness, by vigilance. 
and so the bible says in first peter chapter 5 it said be sober be vigilant who by night stand in the house of the lord so priests and their business and all that they did was characterized by consecration and separation they were separated unto god by certain rituals certain lifestyles priests were also in charge of offering prayer and incense which we will see later priests were concerned with the service of the lord's house in the old testament priests were also custodians and teachers of the law ezra chapter 7 the bible says in verse 10 ezra who was a priest and a scribe had desired to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to obey it and to teach the statutes to the children of israel so a priest was supposed to teach the people about the ways of god a priest was supposed to relate that which was seemingly mysterious because god is spirit you cannot understand the ways of a spirit using your natural mind someone who has been indoctrinated in that culture someone who has had an experience of knowledge will have to indoctrinate you step by step to be able to understand this spirit that we call god and that's the reason why even in african pagan priesthood you notice that usually the picture of a priest you have is one whose one of the eyes is colored with a white chalk and the other eye is bared meaning that he is an interface between two realms the realm of the spirit and the realm of the physical and that eye that is colored with chalk means one of his eyes can peep into because the realm of the spirit is a realm of reality and experience is a real realm is a world of its own is a civilization of its own it has movements like we have movement in the natural it has vehicles like we have vehicles in the natural it has people it has tribe it has culture everything you see in the natural is a reflection of a culture that is in the spirit and every believer that has been called by god as a priest must learn the ways of this spirit called God why the reason is because this earth is a borrowed realm this earth this realm we call the earth is not an original realm that is the reason why eventualities happen that's the reason why you have what you call coincidence that's the reason why there can be interceptions the Bible says, I know many people will go and quote Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, uh, cold and, and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. And somebody builds his financial life on that. And there's no problem with that. But if that is the foundation for your financial life or financial prosperity, you will come head to head with eventualities. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains. Meanwhile, the earth does the foundations of the earth is water, and water is unstable. When Jacob was blessing his first son Reuben in Genesis 49, verse 4, he said, As unstable as water you shall be. How do you build a house on an unstable foundation? Is somebody hearing me this night? That's the reason why in the New Testament God gave us a better platform. In Galatians chapter 6, in verse 7, he says, He that so, or is it verse 8 now? He that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life and peace. But he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. This earth is not original, it was borrowed. It was created as a subset, as a material expression of another original realm. Hebrews 11 verse 3 tells us by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things that are were not made by things which appear. So this earth being that it's not an original will only be sustained by the life, the energy 
and the power that comes from its parent realm which is the realm of the spirit that's the reason why God said heaven and earth will pass away but my word will not what so God needs men that will stand as interface between the realm of the supernatural and the natural and those men as, are classified as priests and the Bible says that every believer has been made unto God a priest and a king so your dominion and your influence on earth is characterized to the degree or to the degree to which you exercise priesthood in Job chapter 33 in verse 38 verse 33 rather he said knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and can you set its dominion on the earth so for you to walk tall on this earth for you to walk above challenges and eventualities for you to truly live as more than a conqueror you need to sustain energy you need to master the principles and the laws that govern a higher realm and then colonize this realm that means you can decide the, the activity of things on this earth to the degree to which you are a master in the realm of the spirit. I may not be talking to everybody this night, but there are people that will share this cry with me that need to know that it's time for believers to stand as priests. We have too many eventualities in our, in our world today. Why? Because there is lack of understanding of this identity. And it's so sad that in this generation, when the church is supposed to be awakened as light, we have too many lazy Christians. Part of the character of laziness is that it, it is fast or quick to put blame on others when it fails in its responsibility. My father used to say a lazy man quarrels with his tools. Why is it not working? And the reason why it's not working is because of this, this, this. And you begin to blame your equipment. That means... And you know that's how Satan stole dominion from man. When God came in the garden and said, Adam, it was Adam he put in charge. Maybe that's the reason why Eve, this is not part of the message, but this is a digression. Maybe that's the reason why Eve ate that fruit somehow in my opinion i'll not blame her you know why because when god gave that law in genesis chapter 2 eve had not been created it was adam that was there so this is me just thinking in my opinion that adam did not do well to disciple eve to understand that i don't know he was so happy he saw a beautiful woman eve he said hey this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh you shall be called woman come 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 and he forgot what god gave him to do that's why in chapter 3 the serpent came to who eve because the serpent had intelligence that eve did not know what god has said and when god came to adam i thought adam would say i'm sorry i messed up adam said the woman you gave me he transferred dominion to the woman God came to Eve. Eve said, the serpent beguiled me. God came to the serpent. Was there response in chapter 3? No. That silence was the contract that sealed the dominion of man, relinquished on a platter of wood to the serpent. Because when you begin to understand and study the mystery of dominion, you will know that there is dominion in silence those days they used to say to us that big dogs don't bark they do what bite so every believer is called to the life we are sentenced to the life of priesthood we must understand how to interface between god's realm and this realm priesthood is filled with all different kinds of activities but one of it, which I want to share tonight, we will pray. After that is prayer. The reason is because one of the, the, the activity of a priest is to offer sacrifice. And in the New Testament, prayer becomes the primary medium of sacrifice for a believer. 
the most basic sacrifice a believer can give to God is the sacrifice of prayer. Psalms 1, 4, 1, verse 1 and 2. Let the lifting up my hands touch your heart. Let the lifting of my voice reach your heart. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice. Not my complaint. When I cry unto thee. Why? Because of prayer. Verse 2. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as what? The evening sacrifice. Now, there were two sacrifices performed in Israel. In the old priesthood. Every day. Because sacrifices were performed every day. And so if we have been called as priests unto God, it means that we owe God certain sacrifices on a daily basis. That means that there are certain activities we must be consistent in as believers. And if you find it missing in your life, you may be living a, a, a pirated version of Christianity. There was the morning sacrifice and there was the evening sacrifice. Not much is spoken about the morning sacrifice in Israel. But they were notable events spoken about that were associated with the evening sacrifice. For instance, in 1 Kings chapter 18, it was at the time of the evening sacrifice when Elijah called upon God that fire came down. Elijah was wise. He understood the timings of the spirit. That's why he didn't start the sacrifice first. He said, you guys go ahead and shout. You know why? Because Elijah knows that man think that day starts from morning and ends in evening. But in God's calendar, day starts from night, evening. Genesis chapter 1 verse 4, he say, And the evening and the morning were the first day. The day started from night. Everything you see in the day is only a reflection of what has happened in the night. It is in the night that strategy is, 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 is concocted. It is in the night that you plan. The day is only for manifestation. And God told Job in Job chapter 38. He said, Has thou commandest thy morning? Luke chapter 1. It was at the time of the evening sacrifice. While Zechariah was in the temple. That Gabriel appeared. This is priesthood we are talking about. So in Psalm 141 verse 2, he said, Let my prayer be to thee as incense. And God told them that incense must be continually in the holy place of the temple. Aside from the incense that the priest will burn, incense speaks of your worship and prayer. Aside from that incense, they were to put frankincense amidst the shoe bread that was before the presence of God. Because there must be a vapor of worship coming before God consistently. And the psalmist says, my prayer should be to you like incense. That means that my prayer must be characterized by consistency. By sustained and continuous. That's what I call priestly prayer. That's the prayer that saturates the throne room. That's the prayer that attracts God to a man. He said, even when I lift my hands, let it be to you like a sacrifice. Hey! Small wonder, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, that your body should be what? A living sacrifice. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 8, he said, I will that men, therefore, pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. wave those holy hands to God do you know that as you are waving according to these scriptures you are offering a sacrifice to God ah, yeah, 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 yeah. please put your hand down you enter a kekena pep and you see somebody holding something like beads and he's picking it one by one to you is foolishness but that's the wisdom of priesthood. Because there must be a sacrifice of prayer consistently before God. 
this is our identity as believers this is why we were saved and left on the earth it looks to me like prayer is the only medium of interface between the realm of the supernatural and the natural and that's why god desires it to be a sacrifice the difference between a sacrifice and a gift is the expensive nature of the sacrifice god knows that aside from prayer his power and authority as mighty as he is is chained and tied because prayer is the license we give to heaven to interfere that means the day that you stop praying you stop giving license god's license expired and that's why he's there seeing the enemy attack god do something god is saying you didn't give me license to come in you see why the devil fights prayer with sleep most times shut that door of prayer let there be a little moment of darkness and you know he's called the destroyer and we are living in a time where we have a lot of christians who probably have the lack of this understanding and as a result of that the prayer volume in the body of christ is too low is too low is too low you don't determine the power of our prayer by the noise we make when we pray you don't determine the power of our prayer by the heat you are praying and you start sweating no 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 that's not the power of your that's not how you determine or you judge the power of prayer it is the things that that prayer can shift from the realm of the spirit to the physical it is the implications that it can cause in the natural that determines the strength of that prayer and i weep in my heart because i say this to every one of us to the body of christ and to myself i weep in my heart because if we don't stand and become consistent in offering this sacrifice of prayer something is becoming wrong with our priesthood and sooner or later the hand of god will almost look like it is tied the purposes of god may be delayed may not be denied but can be delayed and i fear because in the midst of delay the one who carries the prophecy can be cut off so we have a lot of comfortable christians that the things that god blessed us has become the snare of us when you were living in a one room you had no fun you were praying and god gave you a good job now now you live in a three bedroom flat you have air conditions in your parlor and all the room you installed solar recently bless god for you and that ac is what makes you you converted your prayer time and added it to your sleep time because the normal eight hours is not enough we live in a time where we are so used to comfort we have become too comfortable the blessings of god has become the snare it has become the curse beware of comfort god told them in deuteronomy chapter 8 that you don't get into the land and forget your god he said when you get into a land filled with milk and honey to houses you did not build but inherited olive trees and vineyards you didn't plant but you inherited you everything you saw is free and you see that's the the twist in the gospel of grace because we think that jesus has done everything so all is free in heaven in, in, in christ he said don't forget the Lord. I weep for the laziness, the level of laziness in the body of Christ. A lot of good and well-meaning believers who are not mindful or concerned about what is happening in their territory. Even in their immediate family, they are not concerned. Why? Maybe because they lack the understanding that they have been called as priests. And so because of that ignorance, darkness ravages the entire family. It's saying in Psalms 82 verse 5, they know not, neither do they understand. And they walk in darkness, darkness of ignorance. And as a result, the, even the foundations of the earth is out of course. He said, I've said that you are God and children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Too many laziness in the body of Christ. We cannot stand up and determine things in our government. The church that is supposed to be an institution of our own, a city set on the hill. We have joined the masses to, to do solidarity chant. When was the last time solidarity chant worked in this country? 
When was the last time protest was done? And it was attended to. When last? I'm not saying this to criticize. I'm just pre presenting facts to you. Instead of us to shut our doors and begin to raise incense of prayer, we now carry placard and go on the streets. And the reason is because we think that the enemy of our domain, of our territory, of our nations, is flesh and blood. No. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. There are demonic forces in the realms above. Men are just puppets. How will one man stand up? We just enter a new year, stood up and look at a smaller country and say, I will destroy this country. No, he's a puppet. There's a demonic prince behind him. He's only acting out the character of that prince. You see, war loom over nations. That's because a, a blood-sucking spirit has been released. And he has a short time. The Bible says in Revelation 12, he says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. For the devil has come down to you with great wrath. For he knows that his time is short. So within that short time, wreck as many havoc as he can. A blood-sucking beast is released over a nation. And is looking for blood. And what we find in the physical is war. No, it's not just war by guns and by bombs and shellings. No, a spirit of Herod has been released. Another man stood up and said, I'm ready to fight dirty to become the next leader. That's an altar speaking. That's the voice of a spirit talking. People think that's just a nice comment on social media. You know Yeram? Have you know Yeram? this night we are cold man. a man stood up recently and said he's ready to fight dirty what's the meaning of that to be the next president <laughs> and you know one thing with evil men they don't just make threats when a man comes out and says I'm ready to fight sacrifice has been made blood has been shed and our political brothers want to contest. What do they do? No altar of prayer. No altar of priesthood. You see, that's the reason why God will prepare you ahead of time before you eventually get to a position. God knew that the throne of Israel was a throne that will be faced with contention. And that's the reason why God took 13 years to train a warrior for that throne. You look at the battles that David fought. It was because of the battles David won. The Bible says God was with him and he won every battle. David mastered the art of priesthood and translated it into spiritual warfare. So much so that he won every battle. Even when he sinned against God, in his sin, he still won. Can you come can you can you can you come to that point where the volume of your priesthood becomes so strong that even in your weakness demons still flee? He slept with another woman's wife, that war they still won it. And the Bible says there was peace all through the, the reign of Solomon. But our brothers, what do they do? No prayer altar, no sacrifice, no nothing. And you want to go head to head with a man that has slayed seven heads and put it on the ground. The need for priesthood. You are in a, an organization. You just got in there. Oh, it's a great job. You testified. Your starting salary is 500,000. I hope you know that when they placed that advert, there were people in that organization who applied but didn't get it. And you got it and you came to the office well dressed smiling with everybody you just started a battle you just started a war i'm not saying which haunt your people in your office i'm just telling you how life is because somebody who is bitter that you have that position against him out of that be, be careful of bitter people out of that bitterness may vow that you will not I am a toast, cabranda, skitter. 
Many years ago, when my dad was serving with the Navy in Calabar, he told us this story. I think someone connected it to him or so. Became a commissioner. They announced it, say, on Friday. By Monday, please be seated. They announced it, say, on Friday. By Monday, he went to his office to resume and he saw charm on his seat. That's induction. That's orientation. Welcoming service. Charm. That means for this place, we they do things here. Yeah. There's a word called competition in the animal kingdom. It's not only in the animal kingdom. It's more real in, in this realm. Thrones fight. You call it a job position. You call it a position, a job offer. But in the realm of the spirit, it is a throne. And there are contentions for that throne. And so if you don't understand priesthood and raise a sacrifice, an altar of prayer that challenges the altars of Baal. Because Elijah's altar was not the only altar that was built. The Bible says there were 450 prophets of Baal. That Somebody just got tired of this nation and said, I'm traveling abroad, I'm relocating. And you got all the visa and everything and traveled. Welcome. I hope you know that demons don't need visa to fly. And he thinks he has gotten to greener pasture. Three months down the line, he's worse than he came. Eight months later, they deported him back. Priesthood. So what are the benefits of prayer? Three and then we'll be done. I told you that prayer is the primary medium of offering sacrifices to God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, Jesus taught a parable to this wise that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Timothy 2 verse 8, he said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, that men pray. That means as long as you are a man, you have been sentenced to what? A life of prayer. He didn't say Christians. He didn't say Hindus. He didn't say Buddhist, he didn't, he didn't, no try, he said, man, ought always, is a must. There are things in the kingdom that you came and met, they are just there. They are common denominators. You can't argue it, you can't preach against it, you can't remove it from the equation. Prayer is one of it. I told us last year that prayer is a sacrifice to God a shield to the soul and a scourge to the devil let me say it again prayer is a sacrifice to god a shield to the soul when the bible says and take up the shield of faith with which you will quench the fiery darts of the enemy i hope you know he was not talking about the knowledge of the word of god he was talking about conviction that has been solidified by revelations birthed in prayer Jude 20 build up yourself on your most holy faith how by praying in tongues it's good to know the word but as you begin to deploy it in the furnace of prayer the power the energy in that revelation is broke breaks forth and it builds a conviction inside of you and that becomes a shield of faith Arrows that the enemy son sends against our soul. Arrows of depression. Arrows of discouragement. Arrows of despair. It is with the force of prayer that you ward off those arrows. And it's a scourge to the devil. A scourge is affliction. So what are the benefits of prayer? Number one. Prayer is a shield against temptation and evil. These three and then we'll pray. Prayer. 
is a shield against temptation especially when it is priestly prayer when it is prayer in the form of sacrifice given consistently to god is a shield against what temptation matthew chapter 6 luke chapter 11 the lord's prayer and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one king james say from all evil new king james say from the evil one the evil one is the devil that means deliverance comes how by prayer psalms 18 verse 3 i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved prayer is a shield every time the lust of your flesh becomes pronounced brother is it looks like your prayer is down you need to gather energy the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 13 it says, if we live according to the flesh we will die but if by the spirit we put to death the deeds of the flesh if by the spirit we put to death how do you employ the agency of the spirit to death in the flesh you realize that when you became saved your spirit became born again but your mind and your body was not born again no. it's still the same old mind you use it is used to evil it has its desires exercised towards evil so now that you are saved you must learn the process of starving your physical appetites so that your spiritual appetites will appreciate otherwise lost and so it takes a volume of prayer this is not just a sermon this is a cry i'm giving it takes a volume of prayer to stay steadfast jesus told them in luke 22 in verse 40 he said pray that you enter not into temptation next thing you woke up one morning and you saw yourself in a on the bed with your colleague how did this start it started when you entered that office and the first thing satan began to kill was your prayer life so you walk from eight to five and that became an excuse when you come back you just sleep and rest eat and then you sleep all through the night the next day wake up carry i am confession i am a child of god i am a child <laughs> you know sometimes we think that these these spiritual principles are a charm it, you <laughs> may god deliver us from paganism an average nigerian just wants some he just needs a poultice a magical one that i can touch here touch here and that's it so give me the i am confession he recited over him and then god of apostle jonathan arise for me and slowly but surely his prayer life is dying dying once prayer begins to die in the life of a man the angelic activities in the life of that man begins to lift all of a sudden anybody can just quarrel you in the office you think quarrel just starts like that you go to the office on monday morning and somebody know a spirit manipulated from the night and when you were supposed to pray you were smiling and you smiled and smiled to delilah let me teach you something those of you who walk eight to five whether in an office wherever or you are going to feel find a way to build it build a, a prayer make see make it a discipline is a drill if have you gone to nda before do they pet them imagine if all the cadets in nda was pet nigeria's security system will be in jeopardy that's why the bible says thou therefore my son endure hardness build a drill build a culture make it a way of life this is not about the spirit move me or not who cares about spirit move me or not make it part of you do it to you Smith Wiggles was said, if the spirit doesn't move, you move the spirit. La cobra scataba nekaide. That your office toilet is so fine. It has shower, it has tap. Let me teach you one strategy. Go there during break on the tap. The tap will not allow them to hear your groaning in the spirit. Groan there for 15 minutes. Barato kapata poskata balate braskipata askapra takata. They are hearing tap when they finish you come out you don't do it satan will look for a way to teach you 
because we have brothers from the other side who no matter the work you give them they don't forget their time of prayer who told you they are praying to powerless gods don't be deceived I am invoking the spirits of the east is that not where they face when they want to pray the wise man that came to Jesus was from where do you think what standard did the Bible use to judge their wisdom when you say wise men he was talking about wizards that's just the meaning wizards Laban told Jacob in Genesis 31 he said I have known by divination I think in King James or New King James he used the word experience he said I have known by experience that the reason why I'm blessed is because of you the original meaning of that word experience is divination enchantment this was Jacob his nephew but he was using enchantment against him Prayer is the shield against temptation and evil. Number two, prayer secures the manifestation of our redemptive rights. The manifestation of our redemptive rights. All that God provided for you in redemption, what will secure the experience of the same is prayer. God provided healing, but it takes prayer to translate it. God provided salvation. That's the reason why even though salvation is free by the blood of Jesus, the Bible still said if a man shall confess with his mouth and believe in his heart, it still involves your participation. For the man believed unto righteousness, but the man confession is made unto salvation. Everything that is yours, the Bible says, according to as his divine power had given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, it is secured. The experience, the manifestation is secured on the platform. A believer that does not pray will not see all the rights, the privilege, and the benefits of redemption. Quote me anywhere. It will look like you are reading a storybook called the Bible. The Bible says, none, shall, none of the inhabitants of Zion shall say, I am sick. That means before God, sickness does not exist. But why are people still sick? And that's why in James chapter 5, he says, anyone that is sick among you, let him call the elders and let them do what? Pray. It's prayer that will secure it. Let me tell you something. Prayer is, is, is a way by which you translate. Oh, that's the third point and I'm entering into now. So let me leave it till I enter into it is insisting that all that God has said concerning me comes to pass. It's compelling the powers of creation to align themselves to bring the materialization of God, that which God has said. Even Jesus had to pray. Do you know that it took the prayer of Jesus for him to successfully die? You know, we are Bible believers. I will not say anything from the blues. I'll prove it to you from scripture. Revelation 13 verse 8, he said, The Lamb of God that was slain from where? The foundation of the world. Before the earth was created, before time, he had been slain. But when he came into time, he took prayer to take him to the cross. Luke chapter 22, the Bible says, He prayed three times. And an angel came and strengthened him otherwise he would have died before he got to the cross because medical scientists know that the moment a man starts losing blood because the life of flesh is in blood the energy the power of flesh is in the blood as long as you consistently lose blood you are dying progressively jesus started bleeding from the garden it took a supernatural strength to sustain him to the cross to die there and to show you that he didn't die by the cause of the affliction that was given to him on the cross the last thing he said on the cross was into your hands i commit that was a prayer even to the cross that's the reason why a lot of christians go through hard times and challenges and die inside why there's no volume of prayer to sustain them no energy bank your priesthood is dead there's no intervention of heaven but tonight god is raising an army 
number three and then we'll pray the benefits of priestly prayer prayer is the system by which we transport or translate possibilities from the realm of the supernatural to the natural everything is possible but with God the Bible says but with God all things that means minus God there are some things that are not possible so you want to live in a life of all possibilities you need to learn how to partner with God the God of all possibilities by prayer when we quote that I am confession and say my existence is powered by a supply that knows no limit brother is more than the quoting you know, that's why after the quoting or the reciting we pray and I see many of us we just mm, no, 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 no. prayer is the enforcement agency to say as it is written is the enforcement agency that executes the decree the legislatures or legislators they can make the laws but it takes an executive arm to see to it that the law is enforced and that's what prayer does with prayer you can translate things from one realm to another realm you can transport possibilities you can check into your destiny in god this is you on earth going through lack going through affliction but you can check your destiny in god and see the promises of long life he said with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation why is death always over me and my family and then by prayer priestly prayer you begin to force that reality it's like stamping upon that which is already stamped overriding on things that are already decreed by the enemy you translate it that's why jesus prayed there are four gospels written in the new testament before we pray matthew mark luke and john these four gospels were the four faces of the life and the ministry and the death of jesus you know in ezekiel he saw cherubims with four faces the face of a lion the face of a calf the face of a man the face of an eagle same revelation john saw in the book of revelation these four faces expressed the, the ministry of jesus it was jesus that they were tapping into the revelation of jesus the lion speaks of kingship that's what matthew declared that's the reason why matthew had to trace jesus this century to king david and all that jesus spoke about in matthew was what kingdom 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 mark didn't bother about the life of jesus enter chapter one ministry starts because mark is symbolic of the servant that's the face of an ox or a calf and that's why at the end of the book of mark an assignment go into the world and preach the gospel but the book of luke is the face of a man and from chapter 1 to chapter 24 prayer is characterized around jesus chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 zechariah was in the temple and they were praying outside and gabriel appeared and that was the prophecy that gave birth to the prophecy of mary and elizabeth you know mary and jesus born when jesus was born taken to the temple in chapter 2 the bible says there was a man and a woman simeon and anna anna dedicated herself to prayer i did my calculation one time the bible says she was a widow from her youth married her husband when she was a virgin stayed seven years the husband died and she became a widow till she was 84 and i did my calculation i discovered that she prayed 55 years because when the Bible says virginity, it means from between 16 to 18 years. With fastings and prayer. That's a woman. Now a woman take in. And that becomes the excuse for not praying. I hope the demons will not wait for you in labor room. In fact, one of the clearest force of prayer that the Bible illustrates for us is the birthing of a woman as soon as zion travail that if you can travel like a woman that is how christ can be formed in a man chapter 3 he came out from the river chapter 3 verse 21 and 22 and the bible says while he prayed that was when the heavens opened chapter 4 he was in the wilderness fasting and praying and he returned in the power of the spirit verse 14 
chapter 5 the bible says the multitude pressed on him but he often withdrew himself to pray chapter 6 he went to pray verse 12 and he prayed all night before god all night means 6 p.m to 6 a.m in jewish culture and that's how he came down and began to choose his apostles these days what do how do we choose leaders in church election so sabon rai will vote this elder because he used to give them money for coke i can go on and on every chapter chapter 11 he was praying in a certain place the disciples said teach us how to pray chapter 18 jesus said men ought always to pray and to not to faint chapter 22 in his passion before he went to the cross the bible says he prayed till his sweat was like drops of blood he told them well, can't you watch with me for one hour and so in my opinion jesus prayed three times in the garden before they arrested him and he told them can't you watch for just one hour so in my opinion he prayed three hours a man knows he's going to die and he has so much time to pray some of us little panic I'm telling you the secret to victory. I'm telling you how you can change things. It, prayer is like, a, it's like, it, it's, it's like a script that God gives you the permission to edit the things that you see in your life. So when they're acting out a movie, not everything you see in that movie, there are some scenes that were not shown in that movie. Why? Because the director, the screenplay people, all of them, they went behind and edited some scenes. Prayer is like a simulation room. You enter and look at your life and edit out some things that are not of God. Jesus said, whatever my father has not planted shall be uprooted. It's by prayer you uproot. There are some things you don't just smile and look at the devil. I told you before that if a farmer refused to sow in his farm things will still grow there because he's not the only farmer prayer you translate the anointing that is on your life by prayer you are a prophet yes but you are not seeing any vision have you deployed that that revelation into prayer but somebody tonight that the energy of god is coming upon and your, the lion inside of you is roaring this night. Something is about to burst forth from your inside. Something is about to change the scenario, alter the landscape of your life. You will know that things can change like night and day when you understand the place of prayer. I share this testimony with you and we rise to, my God, there's fire in this place. I feel fire here. I share this testimony with you. One of my daughters called me from US late last year in December landlord chased her out in the night winter snow why because the landlord was making advances towards her and she refused so in the middle of the night chased her out it was snowy called my phone crying she doesn't know where to go i told her in 72 hours god will give you a place to rest let me just tell you, every time you see, you hear them, I thank God the testimony is glory to God. But you hear them say, I call Papa. He, did, he said this, he said that. That one statement you see may be backed up with days of prayer. I understand the system. I told her in 72 hours, God is sending help to you. And then I locked my door and went into prayer. Bratoska vakalandi kakuprata. Do you know you can summon the spirits of men through prayer? The Bible says God is the father of spirits. You pray, you are speaking spiritual language. You step into a place of dominion. I have never been to US. I don't know anybody there. But I stand in the place of prayer. And by the ability of the Lord's Spirit, the Holy Ghost, summon all the spirits in that territory. Someone must arise and help the daughter of God in 72 hours two people took her in say come we have a place to stay a three story mansion she doesn't pay light bill she doesn't pay rent she doesn't cook food everything is there she has not paid rent for three months in 72 hours you think things will not change it will not change if people don't pray but if men can pray somebody called me within the week he said he went to, he's in Adamawa, 
I don't know where in Adamawa it, it, when his place of work or something. He said when they saw they put nylon and this and this and that in his classroom. And then he just opened the window and cleared the place. And the moment he cleared that thing, his legs be, began to pain him. As at the time he called me, he couldn't stand up. Manda Bakobra Skifalanda Skaboria Kapa. The show brother Ladaba. John chapter 5. Jesus said, The time shall come, and now is the time where even the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Even the weapons can respond. He said, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises, it is by you that they are condemned. I told him, take oil, rub it on your legs. And in one hour you'll be fine. In one hour the arrow was reversed and it was fine. If men pray, things can change. Let me tell you, like I said in the prophecy, PVC will not save Nigeria next year. Register, but I'm telling you, that's can. It will not save Nigeria. PVC, you stand under the sun for days wanting to vote. When somebody can make a phone call, turn that two to 2,000. PVC. That's the lie from the pit of hell. Let's be good citizens of our nation. Register. Get voted. But let the church enter into prayer. It is the prayer of this year that will determine who sits on the throne. We cannot afford to have another press, another demon come to rule in territories. It's time for the church to awaken. If you are feeling what I'm saying and there's energy inside of you, rise up. We are going to pray. So let hope rise as darkness trembles in your holy life. So let hope, let it rise as darkness trembles in your holy life. So let hope, let it rise, as darkness trembles in your holy night. Listen to me. We are going to pray this night. Everything that stands as an impediment against your life, you have been ignoring it too long. It's time for you to face it and command it to be moved out of the way. Death is a spirit. If it can be summoned, it can be rebuked. And the Bible says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Now, thanks be to God who gives us victory. Who gives us victory in Christ Jesus. In the next two minutes, I want you to lift up your voice and command everything that has stand as an obstacle as an impediment against your life, against your destiny, against your family, every force that you have Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 
I don't know why I feel like there is an anointing here to remove mountains, obstruction, everything that has pegged you to a spot spiritually, financially, everything that makes you go in cycles. If you look at your life and you find the activity of cycles, there is a mountain that must be removed. One verse 18. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then lifted I up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. You know why? Because the previous verse, God had declared that through prosperity, my city shall be spread and demonic horns arose to say over their dead body that prosperity heritage will not become a reality. Next verse, verse 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered and said, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Verse 20. I love verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Next verse. Four carpenters. Then said I, What come this to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head oppression wickedness witchcraft suppressing everyone he said but these are come to fray them to cast out the horns of gentiles you are lifting up your voice tonight because you are the carpenter that god has raised every spirit that has arisen in your family to sabotage and subvert them my god there's fire here I want you to lift your voice. As the man has hands to be destroyed. <laughs> name we pray last prayer now let me just announce this i know we didn't take listen i know we didn't take the offering so um in case you will not stay to the end of the service you make sure you just put your offering in the envelope there and you can leave i want us to pray this prayer because i sense a deliverance coming to some people here We are coming against every conspiracy from the pit of hell against you, against your prophecy, against your destiny. Listen, Job chapter 5, it says it disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform. So it's a scheme, it's a conspiracy, it's a strategy put in place. But the Bible says it disappoints the device of the crafty. Listen. Isaiah 44, it says in verse 23, it says that the, that frustrated the tokens of liars, 25 rather, that frustrated the tokens of liars and drive diviners mad, 
diviners are people who use divination to make enchantment cast spells over individuals over families over cities over territories over communities but the bible says he make them mad the bible says he driver them mad as you pray this night every conspiracy from hell that is against you god will disappoint that conspiracy and God will sabotage hey! your conspirators in the next two minutes. Open your mouth. Commander that the devices is be Please lift your hands.
two prayers and I'm done tonight. The Lord showed me my vision. I want to pray. There are people here who the crisis around your life as a result of demonic attacks that came through dreams. It's time for your deliverance. Please lift your hands. Close your eyes. There's fire in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray from my left to my right, from the front to the back, you showed me in a vision there are those who were attacked from their dreams and you want to bring an end to their oppression. Holy Ghost, as I pray, let your fire be released. Find any of such a person at the count of seven. Let that arrow be reversed. Let the fire of God bring deliverance. No amen now. It's coming. It's coming now. At the count of seven. At the count of seven. By the fire of deliverance. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. That's it. That's it. That's it. Seven. Holy Ghost. My Father, separate them. Let those weapons of darkness be destroyed. I reverse those arrows now. I reverse those arrows. I reverse. Help them. Help them at the back. Help them. There's a lady that God showed me my vision this afternoon. I don't know what kind of what mysterious thing happened around your life i saw a lady boy maybe more than one just the strings and the cymbals please because of a demonic activity around your life it's like you were attacked possibly in dreams and because of that you woke up and found a mark or some marks on your body physically please lift your hands i want to pray Father, whoever that person is, you showed me that vision. I send fire now. Whatever enchantment was concocted with that mark or with those marks, I neutralize it now. I neutralize it by fire. 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 By help them. By fire. By fire. Touch. Holy Ghost. And I pray in the name of Jesus that everything that has stand as an impediment against your people, against their destinies, against their prophetic mandates, mantles and assignment, against their finances, their resources, let that mountain give way now. Let that mountain be crushed now. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the paths of iron asunder. Every gate that has resisted you, tonight let those gates be broken. Let the paths of iron be crushed. Be crushed. Be crushed. Be crushed. Be crushed. And I declare release now. I declare access now. Thank you, Father. If you want to say yes to Jesus, just lift your right hand where you are, and I'll pray for you. And if there is none, bless the Lord for such a meeting tonight. Thank you. 